So here it is. This is the cuticle prep bit. So it's an oval pointed bit and it's going to remove all the non-living tissue that's on top of the natural nail and you can see how it just wazzies that off so easily. It's an essential tool when prepping for acrylic or gel. I'm going to create that nice border with it. I love this tool, absolutely love it um, and I came up with this because I wanted something that had a round tip but also would have a little bit of length that I could use for that proximal fold exfoliating the dead skin and also if you notice it pushes back the cuticle as well. Then I'm going in with a 240 bit of file. Just prepping the surface of the natural nail, taking away the shine. Here I've already added tips and we're going to dehydrate and prime the nail ready for product application. These are a special set of nails. They're not just your average set of nails. I did these for my cousin. It was her wedding and she recently lost her dad, obviously my uncle me, and we wanted to do something really special. We wanted them to look like wedding nails obviously, so like we're doing a ombre, got a French ombre going on, but we wanted to do something really special, so I had the idea of using my uncle's ashes inside the nails. Because, you know, I, I see the ashes quite a lot because my mum's got them on the side, so I see them and I always think, oh, I want to do something really special with the ashes. Um, you know, because obviously my uncle can't be there at a wedding and he's, you know, such a massive part of our lives that, you know, I wanted to do something really nice. So we came up with the idea of encasing the ashes into the nails, but we still wanted them to look like wedding nails as well. That's why we, we thought the French ombre would look really nice. So I've gone in with the white and gone just over halfway. And then I've got natural beige from Nail Nails and I'm gonna pull that down and overlap over the top of the white, which is gonna help with that fade. The natural beige colour also gives that flawless colour to the natural nail as well. And this will also build up strength. It is a strength product. And then we've got Blank Slate. Now the Blank Slate, what it does is it creates a perfect blend between the two colours. Because it's kind of like a... I always say it's like a... Um, skimmed milk it's kind of like skimmed milk because it's got some color but it is transparent as well and that just makes that transition really beautiful and also builds strength at the same time the brush that I'm using is the Alicia brush so it's a nice size not too big not too small and you can see the ashes here and I really don't think that they look too dissimilar to something that you would put into nails because they you know they're little flakes and we did have a real close look at them and this was quite an emotional stage of doing these nails because obviously this this is my uncle Mick right now we're putting my uncle Mick in a little little tray and we were sort of picking out the bits that we liked um and we were quite fascinated actually because under closer inspection you can actually see those tiny bits of bone fragment and it was like it's quite fascinating but very emotional at the time as well um i was really pleased with how they actually turned out so at this point we're just sort of like spreading them out and having a little look at what they really look like because you have some really fine kind of like dust pieces of ashes and then you have more chunkier pieces. Um, Charlotte did have a little joke and said, oh, I think that's my dad's filling. <laughs> I was like, I don't think it is. I think it's a bit of chunky bit of bone, that is. So you can see me picking, picking out here a piece 
and, he, and I was showing Charlotte at this point, this is like where we were like really fascinated by it, because I suppose when you look at Ashes, you don't really look at them as close as, you know, as we did on, you know, this day when we did these nails. This was a couple of days before Charlotte's wedding. And what a wedding it was. It was an absolutely amazing wedding. It was beautiful. Got a bit nervous at this stage. Because I was thinking, oh my God. I'm actually putting part of my Uncle Mick into my cousin's nails. It was like, you know, and this is her dad. You know, it was, it was just quite surreal really we it was like we had excitement but then we had like it was the reality of what we were actually doing sort of hit home and it was quite emotional but in in a nice way in a very nice way not in a bad way so i've applied um a natural base you could use any sort of cover pink that you like just to give that natural nail a nice gorgeous cover because we don't really want to see the natural nail itself, we want to sort of give it a foundation. Kind of like you would if you were doing makeup. I can feel myself getting nervous just watching this because I know what I'm going to do. So I pick up a bead of clear, press it onto the ashes and you can see that it just picks up the ashes. Kind of like you would if you were, you know, encasing glitter inside. And then I just sort of moved them around because to be honest with you, I didn't really know what I was going to do with them until I actually played with it. I didn't know if it was going to work. You know, it, this was a complete test. I'd never done this before. Um, and I just thought, well, we'll give it a go. Um, and it actually lays inside really nice. And it is very similar to sort of putting crushed shells in nails, if you've ever done that. Um, and I just think it, it works really well. It doesn't look like it doesn't belong in the nail. It kind of looks like a, you know, a nail art material, really. So I was just checking here, and I wanted to sort of swoosh it up a little bit. So we had, you know, we drawed the eye up and down the nail. Um, so I just pressed in a few extra pieces. And at this point, we're like, oh my God, this is like amazing. It looks so cool. And then I did put like a, I've got like a shimmery white. I forgot what the name of it is. It's a nail nails one. Um, I think it's called Glacier. Um, it's like a shimmery white. It, is, it isn't a fully, like it's not, it's not really opaque. It's got a slight transparency. So it like kind of works really well as well with this design. Um, and just sort of finished off the edges. So we've got this kind of section running through the center this nail sort of sweeping up and then added a little bit of glitter as well which really finished it off i didn't know if it was going to be too overpowering but i just thought let's give it a go we could really sort of sweep it off if i didn't need it but it, i think it works really well and it it makes it even more wedding like Of course we need to cap this as well so because we've got glitter we've got the ashes and we've got that colored acrylic as well that shimmery white we want to encase that just so we've got a little bit more structure and i don't want to fire through on those beautiful ashes or this, at this point, Charlotte's looking at it and just, you know, getting quite emotional and absolutely loving how it's turning out. Um, so it was quite, it was, it was a happy, happy day. So I'm getting in with my clear now. Notice how I don't bleed out that bead. Whenever you're using clear, I do find that you want to pick up a, a decent sized bead. You don't want it too wet, you don't want it too dry, and then you don't need to bleed it out because I find when you bleed out a clear bead, you tend to add some little 
bubbles and you don't really want any bubbles in there. We want it to be as clear as possible because we want to see the ashes through. I'm just checking the structure, checking everything's nice, knitting up. And the Alicia brush has a size 12, pure Kalinsky hairs. It's, really, it's firm. It has flex at the tip, but it's, it's firm throughout the body, so you can pat and press and manipulate the product. On the other end of the Alicia brush, we also have a 3D brush as well. I found it a little bit easier when I did this nail because, well, I'd already had a go at doing it, so I knew exactly what I was going to do because what we did just was just, you know, I was just eyeballing it and seeing if it worked. Um, so I kind of knew already what I was going to do, so that made everything a little bit easier. That's why I've sped up this one a little bit, because we had the full process before, and we've got to do exactly the same thing. Notice how I don't jam-pack the nail with the ashes. That's because we want to leave, you know, we want to leave some transparency there as well, so we can see through and around those ashes so you can really take in what they are um i know some of you might be thinking well you're putting you know her dad's ashes into her nails and what, what's she gonna do just soak them off and throw them in the bin no we are not going to do that never would we do that we're actually going to remove them so you can see where the ashes are they are quite low down and if you saw you know before how long charlotte's nails are they're not very long at all. She is a nail biter. So we're going to let these nails grow down for at least four weeks and then we will remove the nails. And I'm going to do a video and I'll show you how I do that. And we're going to preserve the nail and she's going to keep it safe in like a little keep safe box. We even talk about doing like making jewellery out of it, making like a necklace or even a key ring because she wants to keep it and rightly so, because that's part of my Uncle Mick. So again, adding a little bit of glitter. We've already added that little bit of um, shimmery white as well. I was hoping that when Charlotte came, she hadn't been biting the nails, but yeah, she had, as always. So again, going in with a clear bead to encapsulate the glitter and the ashes. So if you're wondering how um, my uncle Nick passed away, he had cancer, had cancer for, for four years. He then had back surgery due to the cancer um, being quite aggressive on his bones and the thing that you know got him in the end was sepsis so he actually died of sepsis because he couldn't fight it it was really sad he quite he went a lot quicker than anybody expected to be honest so you can see I'm doing a marble effect now and I use natural beige, mega white, I use some of that glacier shimmery white colour and then I also put a clear bead on top 
Now I like to put a clear bead on top when I'm doing marble effects because it makes everything flow and you get that gorgeous pattern. And when I'm happy with the pattern, I don't want to pat and press it because I don't want to disturb it too much. As you can see I'm doing a very similar thing right on the tip. So I don't like to start, if I start pattern pressing it, you, you, you lose those beautiful shapes. If I wasn't happy with the shape, then yeah, I'd hand press it into a nicer shape. And when I say shape, I'm talking about that pattern of the marble effect. So I've gone in again with natural beige, white, some glacier, and a bit of clear. And I just use the very tip of the brush to just swoosh that around and just going to fill in that tiny little gap there. And then what I like to do, I'm racing ahead here, I'm guessing what I actually do, can I remember? Put a bit of glitter into those little parts that dip down. Yes, I do. <laughs> I know it myself so well. It just makes everything sort of flow together and obviously it's really pretty. I'm currently sat in my bedroom doing this voiceover. I've told the children to be quiet. I've got to school tomorrow. Hooray! Um, I won't miss them yet, to be honest. And I had a late night last night because we were uploading all the new products to my website. So we've got so much now for everybody to choose from. So we've got some amazing tools because we need your tools. And if you don't have great tools, then you won't have great tools. If you want to check everything out on the website, it's www.kirstenmeeting.com. So we can have a little look what we've got in store for you now. Clear bead, just to encase that glitter more than anything and to give it a little bit of structure. So we're using the shape bit. Now this has got a purple Swarovski crystal at the end. It's got a purple dust band. It's a pale pink ceramic bit absolutely perfect for shaping because it's a, a medium barrel so it's not going to it's not a coarse barrel so it's not going to just obliterate what's on there it's you know enough it's got enough facets and, and, and teeth in the actual bit to smooth everything down and shape that nail So when I decided to design these um, bits, the ceramic ones, um, I just thought we need to make them look even pretty. We need, we need a bit of bling because who doesn't love a bit of bling? So we decided that uh, to get the manufacturer to place you know, genuine Swarovski crystals at the tip. I mean, how beautiful is that? It doesn't affect how you file it. It actually gives a slight bit of protection. And that bit has a very soft edge to it as well, so you're not going to cut into your client. So I just finished filed there, and then we're going to go ahead with the buffer. This buffer is a 150 buffer, so it's not going to leave any demarcations in the nail. It's actually going to smooth away any of those demarcations that have been left from the file. And we wanted to just smooth that tip because Charlotte was a little bit concerned that she might have um, her husband's eye out. And then we decided to do something else with the ashes. 
because we were just loving how it was working. So I've dipped into a little bit of builder gel and dipped into the ashes. And I'm going to cure that. So I'm curing that off camera. And you can see that I've got a couple of gels there. I've got one that the viscosity is sort of medium. And then the other one is a lot firmer. And you can see that we're making a globe. And all encased in there is the ashes that look amazing. And we top coat it so we know it's nice and shiny. That I'm using a Pammy Picker Upper tool, which is not a dotting tool. It can be used to make dots, but it doesn't have that ball on the end, which makes it perfect to make globes. Or if you you know you've got your um, anything that you're putting on the end that you want to encase into a globe. It's the most perfect tool out there. Now for the bling. Obviously, we need a bit of bling. So I'm using crystals from Blue Street Crystals. And they're just amazing. They're all Swarovski. And I, that big stone, I secure it with acrylic. And then, all, then I go around the edge with a thick viscosity builder gel to actually hold those stones into place and then we will cure that and then it will stay so I've put the globe on and I've put the globe on with a little bit of gel and then we're going to go round the outside of that ashes globe with some gorgeous little petals now we didn't want to do like um, a rose around it. We didn't want to take the attention too much away from the ashes globe. So we wanted to do something quite simple. But we wanted to add petals around the edge to make it pop. So you see as soon as you put white next to that ashes, next to that globe, as soon as that white goes next to it, it makes it pop. It can, it's now standing out. And this is the nail that has the ashes in as well. So we've got the ashes encased inside and we've also got this ashes globe as well. And obviously this sort of idea of the globe came from doing the bubble roses that we do as well using exactly the same tool doing it, this, using the pan pickle of it. Um, to do the petals I'm using the other side of the Alicia brush which is a size 2 pure Kalinsky 3D brush. It has a beautiful point. It's not too long. I find if you have a 3D brush it's too long, it's a little bit floppy, you don't have that firm pressure and you need to you know, really be able to press into your product to get it nice and thin. A bit of bling and there you have it. Absolutely love them. I call them memory nails. Here's Nick and Charlotte on their wedding day. <laughs> this part was quite special. No worries. Those were the long time we did this.